Hey! Welcome back to a very special episode. I know you saw the title and you thought we'd hop right into that, and we are going to get to those, uh, those SFPs, but uh, there's a few things I want to talk about first. Uh, first, uh, I have started an LLC because we are getting into some, uh, some different things and we just need to make sure that uh, we, we have a proper company structure in place. One of those things, um, we're kind of jokingly calling it the Pyject. It's, it's a project of Raspberry Pi 3 custom cases and I'm um, working with my friend Sean Woods who is also a um, Libra NMS expert and we are going to start selling um, Raspberry Pi 3 devices that are loaded with Libra NMS and you know, you'll be able to buy one of those. We'll ship it directly to you. There'll be videos on how to configure that device. So that's, that's coming soon. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is a, is a program that we've written, um, an encryption program. And you can see this logo behind my, my image here. And it looks like a little padlock and an S. And that's because the name of the software is SpectreCrypt. So what we are going to do is we are going to open up a, um, a beta slash trial. We actually have a um, a trial program where you can't change the keys or anything. And a little bit about SpectreCrypt. It uses dual 2048 bit keys. You control the keys. Once they're generated, we expect you to put your big boy pants on or big girl pants on. Manage your encryption keys yourself. And if you lose those keys, I promise you there is a 0% chance that we can recover that data for you. So we're kind of changing it. We don't want the keys to be centrally stored because we don't want people accessing your data. That's the whole point of this. So it uses uh, dual 2048-bit keys. And what you see on my screen right now, this is the, the demo. So I'm going to say yes to this drag this guy in here so you can see him so you can see that we've got trial version keys and the trial version you cannot change the keys um, and let's see if we oh look look at that logo that's so beautiful so the first thing we'll do is we'll we'll pull it up we'll see the registration and um, you will be able to if you are in the if you, you are selected for the beta program, which I am going to put a link to the Google form if you're interested. Um, put your, you know, fill out the Google form. We are going to be very selective about who gets access to this because it is an encryption program. So um, if you're outside of the United States, you probably will not because of the way export laws work. You will probably not be selected for that. If you are in the United States, uh, we will contact you depending on who you work for. So if you work for a company that is going to try to reverse engineer this thing, which could probably be done, but I think our developers made it um, a headache, um, you may not be selected. So we're trying to get awesome, you know, high-end encryption in the hands of the people. So that's what this is about. This hardware ID, you can see this would be needed if you uh, get a registered version of the program. If you're in the beta program, you are going to get a very highly discounted option to buy the program when it goes live. Um, if you do about SpectreCrypt, you can see SpectreCrypt version 2.2 for Windows, H5 Technology LLC, and our encryption algorithm is ACORKS. That is uh, what we came up with. So uh, this is legit now. It's the real deal. So we'll be doing consulting and selling, you know, the projects through there. Um, and I have, you know, different people that I can hand hand things off to because I still have a day job and that is still my my primary thing. But uh, still bring on the consulting if you're interested. And I do work with some of the other YouTubers, which leads me to the live stream with Chris. That is going to happen on Friday. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen at 8 a.m. Central is I am going to go buy an NES Classic. That's the first thing that has to happen Friday. Um, and then after that, at it would be 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 Central, 11 Mountain, 10 Pacific. That is when the live stream will start. It will be over on the Crosstalk Solutions channel. So I think Chris is going to put an updated video and we'll have a link and all that good stuff. So make sure you put on your thinking caps. I know we're going to have a dial-in. Uh, contest. We're going to give some things away. 
um, the ubiquity access point that I'm going to turn into a clock. I'm going to give that away. I know Chris has got some things he's going to give away. Um, let's see now. What do we want to talk about? Oh, uh, real quick on the the Spectre Crypt. Um, it does come with instructions, and there will be instructional videos on that. It'll be on a separate channel that will be under the H5 Technology LLC channel that will uh, will be spinning up. Um, and so back to the Ubiquity SFPs. So what I've got is I have an entire collection, and we're going to go through these, and we'll talk a little bit about them. So this first one is a single mode SFP. Um, this is the one gig BIDI, B-I-D-I. The B-I-D-I stands for bidirectional. So what's different about bidirectional? You only have one strand of fiber coming to this, um, and it looks a little bit different. We'll we'll do some side by sides. Let me go through the um, the models first. So this is the single mode SFP fiber module, one gig BIDI. This is the multi-mode SFP fiber module, one gig. Pull this guy out here. This one is the single mode fiber module, 10 gig, the SFP plus. Then we've got the single mode SFP plus fiber module, 10 gig bitty, bidirectional. And last but not least, then we've got the multi-mode SFP plus fiber module, 10 gig. Um, on the back, it tells you. So on this guy, this is the 10 gig uh, multi-mode. It's a LC connector, tells you the transmit and receive wavelengths, the data rate, the, the cable distance, and um, the supported media. So you can see for this 10 gig, it uh, would be LC to whatever you have on the other side. I use LC to LC here when I go switch to switch. You have an 850 nanometer uh, transmit and receive wavelength with 10 gigabits. Uh, the cable, max cable distance, 300 meters. So if you didn't know, that's one of the, the biggest difference between uh, single mode and multi-mode is on... Um, Multi-mode, I believe, and if I'm wrong on this, put it in the comments. Uh, Multi-mode has a has a bigger core and the cable uh, distances are shorter, whereas single mode has a smaller core and longer distances. So let's take a look at what a bidirectional um, one gig module looks like compared to just a standard SFP module. All right, so this is the bi-directional and it comes with uh, two distinct colors, the yellow and the blue. So on your bi-directional you can see where you would usually have the other the other laser. Uh, there's metal there and if we pull this out you can't really see it. Eh, yeah, you can. Look at that. There is a uh, the the uh, the optic in there. Now, if we let's see, open a standard SFP, or what I would I guess to really. This is what I would consider standard, and when I say that, because this is what I work with every day. Um, so here's your stand, my standard um, one gig module. So you pull the uh, the end out, and you can I don't know if I can can't really see in there too much, but you have your LC cable, and it just plugs in there. Um, I could actually show you that real quick. Let's see. Let's 
And the nice thing about SFP modules is they're hot pluggable. So uh, while your, your switch is uh, powered up, you can just slide the module in. And so on this guy, you would pull this out. This is an aqua cable, so it can do more than, than one gig. Um, and so then you take this guy and you just plug it in. You hear that little snap. You plug into the other side as long as your switch supports the SFP that is in it. Um, you shouldn't have any problems. So traditionally, I've bought kind of lower lower cost SFPs from Amazon, and uh, those days are likely over since I'm using. Um, I mean, unless I go to another switch besides Ubiquity, but the pricing on these, once again, Ubiquity is is killing it. Um, if you go over to Streakwave, I think like a two pack of these these um, from Streakwave for the one gig. I think it's um, I think it's less than less than thirty dollars. I might I might be mistaken on that, but uh, it's very inexpensive. And if you need SFPs, why not buy the Ubiquity SFPs? You know that they're going to work in the Ubiquity products. Just one less thing you have to troubleshoot. So I will do a follow up video. I have a couple technical things that I want to do this week. So you will, there'll be another video tomorrow on the, uh, the SFPs. We'll actually plug them in. We'll look at the switch, um, and we'll, we'll see what the switch thinks they are and, and talk about how to configure these devices. So that's coming tomorrow. Um, so if you've got any questions about the SFPs, um, you know, put them down in the comments. If you've got any questions about SpectreCrypt uh, or anything else that we've talked about, put it down in the comments. I will not be taking submissions for the SpectreCrypt, SpectreCrypt beta program um, in the comments. You will have to click the link and fill out the Google form for that. And we will keep you um, abreast of the situation there. So um, until tomorrow, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, comment, share, and we'll see you soon.